All right, we are live with another Art of Homeownership Live. Welcome Art of Homeownership community and those outside of the Art of Homeownership community. We're so glad that you could join us today. We are hosting Sosi Avila of Neo Home Loans, and today we are talking about corporate partnerships. This is not a strategy that you see a lot of mortgage professionals adopting and really taking advantage of. So we're going to be talking to Sosi, who has firsthand experience of going through this process with a corporation and landing a larger deal. So you're not relying on your referral sources all the time for business. Mm -hmm. So first of all, Sosi, thank you so much for joining us. We're so glad to have you. Yeah, it's really good to be here. Thank you. How are you? What are you excited about right now, Sosi? Oh my gosh, I'm excited about my day. Uh, I, I don't know if everyone here is uh, taking coaching that helps individuals clarify what above the line or below the line activities look like. Um, I'd love to take a poll, but obviously we can't at this moment. <laughs> um, but if you have been in that type of coaching, um, if you guys have ever heard of Tribe, that's that's one that we do a lot of that in. But in that type of coaching, you're really trying to clarify what is the highest and best use of not just my activity, but what is going to be the highest and best use of my energy. Uh, and today I have a day full of a lot of high energy activities. Um, going to be doing some co-branding videos with agent partners, going to be setting up my social media reels today, uh, more content creation. So it is a packed day of a lot of content, uh, which gets me super excited. That's awesome. You've been killing it with the content. I see your reels Thanks. on Instagram all the time. It's great. <laughs> yeah, there were definitely at first an insecurity to do, but once I kind of got over it and made some momentum, it's been really, really fun. So uh, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that compliment. Yeah, of course. Well, let's um, get some background about your current or past strategies when it comes to generating business. So yeah. in the past, what has your strategy really been to generate leads and referrals? Are you really relying on your realtor partners or financial advisors or how are you generating that business? Yeah, you know, in, in the first part of my career, a, a big emphasis was trying to become the best resource uh, that a real estate business owner would want to add on into their business. Um, and so for me, I got coached by a real estate agent when I first came in the industry who did a, a, over 368 units a year. Uh, so for the agent side, that that is, I mean, for any side, that's massive, but especially on the agent side, that is just huge. And so we we were able to, I was able to learn a ton from him and he showed me what were the things from his perspective that lacked in partner resources from, from the lending side. And so coming into the industry with that perspective, you know, my first and foremost value proposition was how to become one of the most valuable add-ons to a real estate agent's business. Uh, and so, yeah, earlier on in my career, uh, the, the objective was always to find really good producing agents, people who were talented, uh, people who had great, um, ability to connect with clients and convert at a high level and come alongside them and just supercharge that into a into a new platform. Right. What would you say was that missing piece that the the realtor expressed that was lacking from the current uh, mortgage professionals that they were partnered with? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, it's so funny. I always did this uh, conversation called the follow up or the lost lead conversation. And this was one of my entry points right off the bat. It was identifying, you know, in the funnel of all the leads that you generate. When you look at all those leads, let's say you're speaking to a thousand people in one month, right? Um, or I'm sorry, one year out of that thousand people, how many are actually closed deals? And, you know, let's say the number is 50. Right. And when right. I say a thousand people, I'm talking about everybody, everybody that calls on a Zillow, everyone who comes through an open house, everybody that you touch on the sphere. If you have a thousand real estate con conversations with individuals, whether short or long, how many actually turn into closings? And usually it's less than 100. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually less than 50. Uh, yeah. And so then the question is, how many of those 950 do you think actually closed a transaction in the last 12 months with someone else? And statistically, it was about 30 percent. And so when you look at a 30% opportunity loss because someone didn't have the right processes, systems, or even value proposition to help that agent convert that 30%, um, that, that, that is a huge need uh, for, for, a, for a supercharged add-on to be able to try to help them capture that specific clientele. So uh, that, was, that was one of the, the starting conversations I had with our business partners in helping lift their business. Yeah, absolutely. That's great statistics too. That's good um, insight for the mortgage professionals tuning in here. Yeah, absolutely. 
So were you, I mean, currently is your strategy to identify those corporations that you would like to um, go after and ultimately establish a relationship with, or was this instance specifically with the LA galaxy? Was that just a connection that you had and you happened to kind of come up the stars aligned and you came across this partnership? Yeah. You know, every corporate partnership I'm seeing is one that is a long, a long play. Um, okay. and so at first <clears throat> and Ryan might get upset at me for this. I, I've not been <laughs> the best student lately. Uh, but at first, you know, I try just always, and, and I'm assuming everyone here knows the non-negotiable value add of a post-closing call, right? Like if, if you're looking at corporate partnerships, the, the best way to get court to even enter into the conversation of a corporate partnership is so, is being able to leverage the lowest hanging fruit of relationship, which is going to be someone in your sphere, um, or it's going to be someone that you've helped with a deal themselves. And so uh, I'm assuming everyone here, again, it's a non-negotiable activity um, to have a post-closing call with all of your past clients. Um, and so uh, with that being said, especially as art of home ownership users or potential users, I would hope that you guys hear this and go, crap, what the heck is that? And I need to do that because you do. You absolutely need to do that. Um, any type of response you're expecting from a past client in regards to referrals, to relationship building, to corporate introductions, all those expectations you have, you will see that expectation failed if you don't set yourself up to have success in that expectation, right? right. Um, a, a book that I believe a lot of us have read, it's called Extreme Ownership. And when you look at the fact that everything that happens is your fault, you you look at that and we usually we go, crap, yeah, all the failures, that's all on me to some degree. But there's also a flip side to that coin. Not only are all the failures on you, but all the successes are on you as well. And the successes get made, right? The fruit gets birthed from the ground from a lot of really good gardening and tilling and planting and all that stuff. And so the post-closing call is one of the foundational pieces to set yourself up from the for the fruit that you're trying to get from that person. So for me, at first, I was kind of every single post-closing call is doing, I was always trying to throw in um, a little bit of like, hey, and if you have an HR contact, please let us know. We'd love to be able to help yeah. you out with that. Uh, and I was doing that religiously and I didn't see a lot of traction. I saw some sparks and I was like, oh, sweet, this might be it. And then I didn't really see much. And, and from a lot of the clients, I didn't see that they were really excited about it. It was kind of like this one off thing. And so I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I was doing it wrong. So I'm going to definitely ask Ryan for some more coaching on that as far as like how to do that better. Uh, but I started just looking at the client's situation beforehand and identifying if it was one that I wanted to bring that offering to the table. If they're a okay. business owner, absolutely. Um, if they're a high suite executive, absolutely. Or if they're with a company that you know just sparks my interest, absolutely. And so LA Galaxy was one of those on my short list. Uh, we helped the VP uh, of, of the stadium um, with a personal deal. And I introduced this concept about a year ago. And I've been following up on the concept for about a year. Uh, okay. In addition, there's also a conversation with uh, some Airbnb representatives uh, and potentially Netflix that we've still been able to try to, that we're still on that short list. So I'll keep you guys pro uh, updated wow. on that progress. Uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot of fun just being able to identify which ones you want to go after, be very specific on it and make a strategy of follow up to try to catch that for later on. Right. And if anyone didn't catch that, who's watching during that post close call that Sosi mentioned, part of that is um, where do you work? Do you have any contacts at your organization that I'd be willing to you know, pitch to? Or you don't word it like that. You word it in a, a value <laughs> stance way where I want to add value to as many people as possible. Could I get a contact for someone in sure. HR? And that's how you ultimately start that conversation. So yeah. is that how this process went with the LA Galaxy when you started that conversation? Yeah, you know, one of the one of the neat things um, that we get to have is if we truly believe the mission, right? And we truly uh, have an understanding that the AOH platform is a tool to help us change not just the industry, but people's lives for the betterment. 
then now it, the conversation is such an easy flowing conversation. And so, for example, on our post closing call with this representative from Galaxy, uh, the the context of the situation was we were superheroes, right? We closed a loan when someone when when there was some other things going on, and we were able to come in and just be rock stars and get the offer accepted and just be able to blow the person away with service um, and product, and it was amazing. And for any other loan officer uh, standard, that would have been great. And sadly, with all other loan options, as far as what were kind of given from path, from uh, from business owners, you would do that, and then you would just keep that person updated with really nice gifts every once in a while, uh, you know, a Christmas card and some stupid recipe they're going to ignore. And that's yeah. pretty much it. So for yeah. us, being able to utilize this platform, we take we took it to the next level, and the next level was you are so happy about this and you see that it has made a difference for you and most of all the the empire and inheritance you're creating do this for anybody else in your organization as just even as a as a me organization as a whole the education up front that's needed to be able to be super successful once you do get into escrow and then keep that success growing after the escrow closes and and that Absolutely. is the true you know i i know that all of us here hate anything that categorizes into car salesmen so i know even when you're hesitating with <laughs> the word pitch it's coming from that background right yeah but that is the true reason we can come in and not feel the car salesy piece because truly it it can make a massive difference in so many people's lives and we can say it with confidence and genuine desire to make a positive change. And so it, it crosses, it's in the context of pitch, but it crosses into offering and even somehow some aspects, um, charity to just be able to give yeah. that aspect. So, um, so yeah, uh, that, that's kind of how it worked with that one or at least okay. how we started the conversation. And when you had that initial conversation, what did that pitch? Well, first of all, you said that it was what a one year or two year span before you actually yeah. had the conversation with someone at the organization. Yeah. So from that conversation with him, it was a strategic follow up uh, regularly between the agent and myself. So both of us were following up with the individual, uh, just trying to see if a door would open because we felt that we could really give some great value to the entire organization. Um, and so, yeah, we, we stayed following up with him, uh, ended up going to a game, followed up with him in person there. Um, and then from that conversation, especially in light with a really good partner, right? And this is where the synergy between lending and, and realtor is super important, um, or and at least one example of how it can work even more effectively. Um, we finally got a conversation to go, okay, so here's stage one right in this partnership let's do um a food for thought where um it will be made available to all the personnel of the stadium to be able to come on for a webinar and do a food for thought um just session with you guys to see how to leverage real estate how to be able to leverage finances what to know in regards to this um so that potentially you can help these guys be in a better place in the future and so that was the first uh stage there that we completed a, a few weeks ago Absolutely. Okay. And you have that, that deck to kind of walk through. I know I see Ron here asking if, um, so has any scripts that he uses when going through this process. So this is the actual slide deck that you used to present to them in that yeah. first initial meeting, right? Yep. Okay. We ready to walk through it? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Sweet. Um, all right. Is it working? All right. Sweet. So if you guys haven't, if you guys aren't talented with graphic design and Photoshop and all that stuff, and you just want something that's super simple and you're a simple guy like me, beautiful.ai has been one of the greatest resources for me because it's a artificial graphic designer with rules. So you can't customize it the same way as PowerPoint, but it's made that way to be foolproof. So <laughs> for me, it was really great to just be able to try to put something in light with Galaxy to be able to show um, that we're here for them specifically to try to echo value to the organization. Because at the end of the day, whenever you're looking at trying to help an organization, the value comes in when you can help them look better, right? Because they're the ones who are caring enough about their staff to try to put them in a happier place. 
that they even gave the time to a resource of value to present things to them. So with that being said, for us in our presentation, um, we did the food for thought. From there, we went through all who we were. Um, and then the organization person that connected us here wanted to give some background of his story. Um, and whether you have that person or not, one of the sh one of the shares that I would give, uh, especially knowing that there's been a huge influencer upon those in our organization, uh, Rene Rodriguez, being able to share some type of color, right, for individuals is really helpful. Uh, it's always hard when you have a mixed audience because you have some D people who just want the bottom line. You have some other people who are just scared and fearful. And so you have a lot of different pain points you're trying to hit all with one with one presentation. And so my recommendation is usually at least the flow that could go really, really well is making sure that you share some type of applicable story that's going to help people be engaged. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I don't know if everyone here is a student or not of just human humanity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, even looking at scholars and philosophers on human nature of the past, one of the things that I remember reading in my studies with this has been that everyone is a me factory. And what that means is that they change everything to be about themselves. Yep. Right. And so when we hear stories, many times we're interacting with the story from an attention perspective because we're, we're character inserting or we're comparing how would i be like that or right whichever type of uh, application the person is having in their mind is the story is captivating them and they're putting themselves in it that's why usually when you have such a a great story you feel immersed in the story as if you're living it moment by moment and then why sometimes too if you watch a really good movie you go home and have nightmares thinking that the movie was actually real life and realizing it's not <laughs> uh, so being able to present something of inspiration here in this story is key, right? So this becomes the priming of the pump for everything for you. So have some type of story that uh, is going to be able to open up the conversation and draw attention. And then from there, what we did is we were able to work with the real estate agent on how to present some real estate stu uh, case studies. And so his entire topic or his speech during the presentation was on the topic of making dreams possible and avoiding nightmares, right? The context of who we're speaking with were admin and personnel staff of the Galaxy Stadium. And with many of them, uh, demographically, it, it, it looked like they were first time home buyers who just wanted to figure out if some of the fears that they've inherited because of people's past experiences um, was true or if the news articles with the headlines of crashes was uh, actually a, a warning sign for them that they should not enter into the market and so on and so forth. So with that, we broke it up into two categories. We broke it up into the first category, dreams coming true. And what we did is we tried showing further inspirations of testimonials, right? And we tried showing uh, some client situations where we helped the client with down payment assistance. And when we helped them with down payment assistance, legitimately their, their FICO score was too low um, for any down payment assistance program when they first came to us. Within a matter of three months, we did rapid rescores, we brought up their score, and we got them into a house uh, with less than $8,000 out of their pocket these people did not think that they had a chance in the world because they were in their late, uh, they were in their early sixties. Um, and they just didn't think that it'd be possible. We got them into a home a few years ago. And from there, two and a half years later, we just refinanced them, took off the, the down payment assistance. So that's now paid off, lowered their payment by $438. And now they have $117,000 of equity based on their previous, their most current appraisal. Wow. Well. That's the exact response we wanted to try to draw, right? Because right. people connect uh, with that a lot of the time too. They might, yeah, that might be their situation. It might be. Yeah. So being able to show some of these pieces that give people hope, right? My advice to anybody who's creating any type of presentation, realize that your goal is to not get a deal at that very moment. Your goal is to give enough hope and enough value even more so that they want to call you, right? That they realize that their goal can't be accomplished without you being the means of getting it accomplished. And yeah. so from there, we went into a different type of buyer, not just one who had credit challenges or down payment challenges, but someone who didn't really have those challenges and they just 
couldn't imagine buying the house at the prices that they're looking, right? The price points are a million dollars. The price points are $800,000 and they would have, they have a sticker shock because they would have never even thought they would consider a first home to be hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? That is a very mm -hmm. intimidating fact. And so being able to show them the leverage step, meaning that you buy a condo and then from that condo, you buy your next house, um, that, that, for us got in, encompassed in one statement, buying a $1.4 million home with the $21,175,000 down payment. And some people might be seeing that being like, what, what in the world? Like that's not even a percentage of 1.4 million. Like what kind of, what kind of loan is that? It, it, again, this is the summary of it, but the clarity we gave was that if you buy a condo with a low down payment and leverage that condo into a next house, you can get in your dream home through a means of steps. And we used a testimonial of one of our clients as well, um, who bought a condo with a three and a half percent down in the 600 thousands. A little bit after that, within about a year and a half, sold that home, had enough down payment for a 10% down on a million uh, $15 purchase, a million 15 purchase price, bought that house. And literally within two years, the value of that house was now at 1.4. And so being able to break down in very tangible ways, especially for millennials, how you don't go from A to Z, but you go from A, B, C and take that path on. And so that was one of the big eye openers for people, because when they saw that there's a strategic step that needs to be taken, uh, it, it all right off the bat just changed even the way they're viewing us. Yeah, absolutely. And having a strategy to even combat that is setting yourself apart. So the fact that you do have a strategy to approach something like that is key. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And then from there, right, we showed aspects aspects of inspiration, testimonials of hope, and then we went into actual logical statistics. At this point, uh, the realtor had some of the most updated trends on equity in the U.S., um, differences of mortgage practices and just gave what all of us, I'm assuming, know how to give a quick, brief market update to show how this is not a bad market to buy in and handled some of the objections there um, in his description. So uh, we helped him with the structure of this and he delivered it on a beautiful level uh, and, and it was fantastic. Uh, any questions there so far on this slide? We don't have any coming in yet, but that sounds cool. awesome. Good stuff. Beautiful. So the next piece was my part of the talk. And so during my section, I went through uh, some major questions. And so I would just say on this part, what, what, what we found is the structure really caused a lot of great feedback. So much great feedback that <clears throat> for us doing this personnel piece was stage one of the relationship. And if this went well, that the next stage was going to be had. Um, and so at this point, we had so much feedback that was positive that the next stage of working together is now in 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 in, in place. Um, I have another meeting with uh, one of the executives there uh, next week uh, to also speak about doing a presentation for um, the players. And then again, if that then goes well, the next step would be looking at taking the mother organization as a whole and seeing what kind of classes. Uh, presentations and financial literacy pieces we can put in place for their all their employees as a whole on a consistent basis. Uh, and so during this part of the conversation, I think it's really, really crucial to just be able to put some of the some of the elephants in the room, right? Just identify them, answer them. So we went through how do you get the best rate? Should I buy, should I rent or buy? Is real real estate investing outdated? right? Especially with so much Bitcoin thought right now, what is the best option to go down? Can I even qualify? Uh, what about credit and down payment? And what can I afford? So some of these last three questions are the typical ones that are covered. Um, and I wanted to phrase it in a way that was going to be very applicable to the consumer. And these yeah. first three questions are the non-typical, but becoming more regular, especially with millennial researchers um, that have looked through some data, you know, seen some YouTube guy who's trying to become famous and, um, you know, just have bad resources available. So, uh, that was a really great conversation piece ago. We had a ton of questions here, uh, very interactive, uh, and again, very beneficial at the end. And I think it is, it's so important to identify that because there's so much information out there for them to be able to research on their own. And people are quickly learning this and doing their own research. And some of it might be 
um, you know, a misconception that they're coming across that's not necessarily true. So for you to identify that, I think is is really important coming from someone who is a true advisor. Yeah, no, it was, it was, and those are fun questions, right? Like if, yeah. if you've never tested these questions for yourself, uh, whether you're a real estate agent or um, a loan officer, you'll hear them. And, and my two cents is going to be, they're going to subconsciously affect you until you find the answer. And so mm -hmm. for any of us with, you know, moral convictions, not wanting to sell something we don't believe in, it's not good to suppress any objections that sound too challenging to answer. It's really good to lean into them, test them and see how they land. I mean, I can't tell you how impressed I was with comparing real estate and Bitcoin uh, for the average consumer, because, you know, the, the, all of it in a nutshell is, yeah, you can try to leverage $10,000 in a Bitcoin piece, or you can, or let's say it's, it's $30,000, right. For a Bitcoin piece, that's a high percentage return on a low investment or a low asset in comparison to leveraging the down payment for a higher purchase price, right? You're what's going to give you a better return, a lower mm -hmm appreciation on a way higher asset or a higher appreciation on a lower asset. And so being able to analyze those things from a five-year standpoint, a 10-year standpoint, I have been surprised in a good way to see um, what a good balance of that diversifying account uh, investments look like and how real estate wins so well over and over. Yeah, that's a great takeaway. So the last slide, was kind of jumping a little bit into this, right? And so obviously we want to be able to correct people's thought processes. We want to be able to give clarity on how they walk down the path, but we also want to make sure that we share um, there's so much more than just that, right? Because if truly all you're giving is that, then why can't they just go Google search and use some online lender instead of you? Yeah. Uh, if truly all you're doing is, is just that, why can't they just Google search some of your questions, maybe ask you for some of your answers and then go use Redfin, right? Like those, those are the pieces that we're at. And so um, this last slide was specifically in regards uh, to the modern homeownership benefits. Um, and what I was trying to show here it was showing them that when you look at a when you look at a pie chart, and I put together thirty years of owning a, of having a loan, thirty days of uh, shopping, th third, uh, I'm sorry, sixty days of shopping, thirty days of being an escrow, and three days of getting pre-approved. Let's say and it's a little more complicated, right? Um, out of all that, what that shows you, if you combine all those days, what that shows you is the responsibility of owning a home and managing a mortgage. 99.94% of the responsibility is completely out of the hands in the way that the archaic professionals um, have taken responsibility to serve clients. Yep. And so I was showing them that the modern professional and the modern homeowner should be getting benefits with a higher responsibility. And so this is where I use the platform to go into the home, uh, the art of home ownership benefits and show how we're not just wanting to do a fantastic job here in the less than 1% timing of what they're looking forward to. We're going to be helping them proactively in each one of these categories in ways that they didn't even realize they needed help in. And so that was a really great pride piece for me to be able to know that, you know, I'm not manufacturing a fake promise here, but I'm truly being able to deliver something that's been created and has been executed upon over and over and over and was actually the reason why we were even seen valuable enough to offer this food for thought during, you know, during even, you know, a work day. So yeah. um, that was the piece. And then we went into questions and uh, that was it. That's awesome. So going back to your statement, you said that that was the reason that you actually landed the food for thought presentation. So did this organization have a preferred mortgage lender before you even had the conversation with them or they had not experienced anything like this in the past? The, as far as the preferred lender piece, uh, I don't know for sure uh, what other banks that they've kind of had okay. allow offerings, but from what I spoke with the executive, there hasn't been one like like we presented uh, in the past. That's why right. we stood out so much to now take on to the next stage. That's amazing. Okay. 
And so moving forward, what is the, you know, when you start to see the results from this partnership, you had kind of touched on it a little bit, but what is that partnership going to look like? You said about having, you know, lunch and learns and presentations and kind of courses to take them through. Yeah, for us, there would be a, a two-step goal that we're using as a barometer uh, for success in this in this on this path. The first step is making sure that we have uh, regular types of trainings and offerings made available, whether those are going to be recorded and they get made available through uh, that means, or if we do live sessions. Um, but just being able to provide that education piece for us is going to be important as barometer piece number one. Uh, the second piece is being able to have signups. Uh, signups for the or art of home ownership platform, meaning that they're going to be getting whether they're you know potential buyers or their current homeowners are going to be getting the home bought pieces. They're going to be getting the house happy pieces. Uh, they're going to be aware that they have access to very well educated mortgage advisors to do purchase prep consults, meaning that you know we're going to review with them potential numbers, review with them what they need to do to be able to buy in the next six, 12 months, or yeah. even analyze if they're ready to buy now, but they just don't feel like they are. Um, what would it look like if they did? And what are the pros and cons of waiting in that context? Um, so th those would be the two barometers for uh, the two pieces of the barometer for us of one uh, on schedule, regular trainings made available to the entire organization. And then two uh, sign ups from those employees to be able to receive these services that we offer through AOH. Awesome. OK, so so see to tie it all together, yeah. wrap this up. If you had one piece of advice for someone who wanted to approach a strategy like this and try to land these corporate partnerships, what would your piece of advice be? I would say be targeted, right? Like meaning that like put a put someone in your line of sight, identify who you want to chase and be consistent with it. Um, you have a value add and I, I don't know if people ever get hesitant about the pride in our value add, but you truly have a value add that is much better. And yeah. at the end of the day, seeing, seeing that you have this, this great message that can literally change people's lives. And when I say that, I, I, I I think sometimes we forget what that is, looks like, right? We work on so many files that names just become ink on a paper or, yep. you know, uh, pixels on a screen and we forget how much that pixel represents. And so, for example, right, when you talk to your past clients and you hear, you know, one of the things that, I, that has been very dear to me has been speaking with past, past clients who go, so, so you have changed my life. Um, you know, when I first met you, credit wasn't in the right place. I didn't think really I could buy. I knew I had the income. I had somewhat savings, but I didn't know how to do with it at a potential gift. And yeah. within six months, you got me into a home. And a year later, you know, we're speaking about our financial review. And aside from the numbers, literally everything about my life is so different, specifically with my child. My child had no desire in the world before we met to go to college. She had no aspirations. There was no place there for her where she was like, you know what? Something is possible outside of the context that I view. And now in this new home, in this new neighborhood, she's been so influenced by the by just this subculture that we're actually going to go touring colleges this summer. Yeah. Right. When you, when you realize that you get to be a catalyst to help people have a different exposure of life, when you realize that you were a means of providing refuge for families during COVID where, you know, their family of two kids and uh, mom and dad didn't have to try to work remotely from an apartment building during lockdown, but they actually had a house that they could have a yard and the kids go in the back play. Like when you realize that you were the means to provide that and you were the channel for that, again, what we do changes people's lives for better or for worse. And so when you see that you can actually do something on the better scale, take pride in it, target people, not for the sake just of you know selfish benefit, but for the sake of knowing that you're going to benefit them more than they probably even realize. And it's something you can be very confident and proud to try to do. Absolutely. That's so powerful. Well, so see, I can't thank you enough for coming on here. I think this was so valuable and helpful and really got tactical about how to approach these partnerships. So um, if anyone has questions or wants to do this on their 
for their own business, reach out to our team at Art of Home Ownership. That's really the value proposition that Sosi is building this strategy around. So I think it's awesome. And I wish you the best of luck, Sosi. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, hopefully I'll see all you guys on Instagram. If you aren't following me and you want some funny videos, feel free to shoot me a follow. It's at mortgageswithsoci.com or not.com, just at mortgageswithsoci is my <laughs> handle. Uh, but yeah, I'd love any feedback from you guys on other videos to do and anything else I could do to help. Awesome. Keep killing it with the content. Thanks. Have a great one, right, guys. Talk to you guys later.